Hi, what is this solution-focused approach all about? What is solution-focused coaching? What is the difference between Solutions Academy, solution-focused coaching, and other styles of solution-focused coaching? In this little video, I would like to give you a short overview of where solution-focused coaching comes from and what are the main techniques and tenets and attitudes that the solution-focused coach takes toward the client. My name is Kirsten Dierolf. I'm a Master Certified Coach with the International Coaching Federation, and I'm also a member of the Assessor Team for Master Certified Coaches and Professional Certified Coaches for the International Coaching Federation. And currently, I'm also serving as the President of International Coaching Federation Germany. Today is 2020, and I will be president until 2021. I learned the solution-focused approach directly from its founders, Inzo Kimberg and Steve DeShazer, and I have a little picture of them here. One of the main focuses of solution focus is not looking too much inside the psyche of a human being and trying to understand or explain why somebody acts in the way that they act. Solution focus is more about a person and their environment. One of the reasons for that is that solution focus started in a, within a background in social work and not psychology. So Solution focus as social work is a profession or an approach that promotes social change, problem solving within human relationships rather than inside a human being. So it is about people and their environment and we assume that you can never really separate the human being and their environment. There is like this classic Facebook post around before you self-diagnose with depression. Check if you're not actually surrounded by, I won't mention that word now. Okay. So social workers intervene at the point where people interact with their environment. And so does solution-focused coaching. This is one of the reasons why solution-focused coaching, according to Insu Kimberg and Steve DeShazer, is very well suited to work in organizations. When we're working with organizations, we are always concerned with the person, the organization, the team, what have you. This is also one of the differences of a solution-focused approach and maybe approaches that are more about explaining or uncovering mechanisms within the psyche of a human being. For example, in solution focus, we wouldn't go about analyzing metaprograms or something like that, where we are looking from the outside and trying to explain something inside a human being without looking at the interactions. I'm not saying solution focus is the best approach in the whole universe. I know that all other approaches work probably equally well. What I like about solution focus is that we are not pretending we know something about another person that the other person doesn't know, him or herself. So we are truly operating from a position of not knowing. And for me, it is more of an ethical stance to treat people like I would like to be treated, and I personally am very, very allergic if somebody pretends that they know something about me that I don't know myself. I have another video on the history of the solution-focused approach where I explain a little bit more about where it comes from and what the philosophical background of solution focus is. I will post the link to that video in the comments or in the description below the video so you can find it. Another main tenet of the solution-focused approach is that the solution is not necessarily directly related to the problem. If you look at the two pictures here, somebody might want to stop smoking, but if you ask them what do they want to do instead of smoking, 
They might come up with, I want to lead a happy life. I want to lead a healthy life. I want to not get on my husband's or wife's nerves because I need to stop every five minutes and have a smoke. I want to be healthy. I want to grow old healthily or all of these things that might or might not have anything directly to do with smoking per se. We think that it is much easier to choose a goal that you can see positively rather than getting away from something. So be attracted by a positive goal rather than getting away from something. And In a way, no problem can be solved from the same level of consciousness that created is. That's a quote that's been attributed to um, to Albert Einstein. I have no idea whether he actually said it. But what we're trying to do with solution-focused questions is help people design where they want to go rather than explain how they got where they are now. This is also what the main direction of solution-focused question is about. We are trying to invite people to talk on the first floor of the coaching building. So what's the first floor? Here you have a four-field matrix. We can talk about the positive past, what went well, what we we already know how to do, And we can talk about the positive future. Things that we want, things that we desire, a rich picture of what it is that we want to achieve. Clients, coaching clients come to us and they usually come with a description of a problem. Of course, if you go to a coach, you want to make progress on something. So the first impulse of many clients in the beginning is to tell us great length about their problem and where it came from. And in order for us to be able to invite them to the first floor, so rather than talking about the negative past, invite them to talk about the positive past, we can ask a coping question. How have you been able to cope so far? If people are talking at great length about what they fear, what they don't want, what is in their future that they would try to avoid, we ask, what instead? So that turns the description from a negative description to a a positive description. So what would you like instead? Here you can see the main structure of a solution-focused coaching session. This gallery, the metaphor of a gallery, was invented by Brief in London. They train solution-focused therapists and social workers. But I think it is such an, an easily rememberable metaphor for a coaching conversation that I want to share it with you here. This is like a museum. So you enter the museum through the ticket office. In a way, you cannot really start a coaching conversation unless you have a common project with your client, unless you're both clear on what the coaching agreement is, what the person wants after the session, and what the person wants the coaching session to lead to. So it's not just about what will change after the one hour of a coaching conversation. It is about what will change in half a year or until the next time we speak. Once we have the common project, we move into the next room of this art gallery. And this art gallery, the next room, is around best hopes. So suppose your best hopes from this coaching session have been realized. How are you going to notice this? And then you try to get a rich description of the desired future, a detailed picture. And there are many ways in which you can do that. From the best hopes gallery, you can walk to the successful past or instances galleries, instances of the desired future already happening. So when did the problem that you had and you want to get rid of not appear, so it's an exception. 
Or what are some of the resources that you can use? What are some past successes? Or the traditional question is a scaling question on a scale of 0 to 10, where 10 is that you have reached what you are aspiring to for your best hopes, and 0 is the opposite. Where are you now? And what tells you that you're already at this number and not lower? We leave the coaching conversation through the gift shop. This is the room in the museum where you might buy an umbrella with a money on it or something like that. And there you are looking at what could be small signs of small progress. So suppose you are one step higher on the scale. How would you know? Who else might notice that? Etc. Etc. So I'll go through the different gallery rooms in a little bit more detail in the next couple of slides that I'm going to show you. Before I do that, you might ask, why am I calling this solution-focused coaching moves rather than tools or techniques? I think that we are always in the coaching room together with our client. It's not that we are on the outside looking at the client, trying to analyze him or her. We are trying to collaborate with the client to help invite the client into the future that they are desiring for themselves. So this metaphor of, okay, I'm, I have a tool and I'm using the appropriate tool for this situation. So I have a piece of paper and what I need to do is to cut. So I'm choosing the appropriate tool to cut. Is not, I think, appropriate for a coaching conversation because we do not have this outside view of the client in solution-focused coaching. It is more like we're inviting them to a dance. So we are both, the client is dancing, we are dancing and the conversation is emerging as if by a dance. And we're not using something on the client, but we are collaborating and co-creating with our client in the coaching conversation. We are true partners. Of course, the client is always in the center of the conversation and the coach is maybe a little bit decentered. But we are fully there as human beings, the client in the center, and the coach off to the side. So here are some of the coaching moves in a little bit more detail. One of the coaching moves is pre-session change. Usually when somebody has decided to come to a coaching session, something has already happened that was going in the right direction. It's a really good idea to try and help the client identify, observe all the things that are already going into the right direction before even the coaching, se coaching session happened. Question could be what has been better since we've made the appointment? What happened between the time that you made the appointment and now? If the situation is really tough, we can ask coping questions. Solution focused doesn't mean problems, problem phobic. If our clients want to tell us about their problem, by all means they can. We are going to listen with the two really spiky solution focused elf ears, which is what do you want and what do you already what already tells you that you can get what you want. So in coping, as I said before, we are inviting the client into the first floor of the house. How have you been able to cope? What is keeping your spirits up? And questions like that. To create the coaching agreement, we can use the following types of questions. And you can see that this is not about obstacles or what's getting in the way, like in some models, grow model, for example. But it's really about partnering to identify what the client wants rather than what the client doesn't want. 
So how would you like us to start the session, partnering with the client? What are your best hopes? If your best hopes are realized, who will notice? What will they be noticing? What difference will it make to your life if you, um, if this coaching session is really useful or if you've solved the issue that you came with? What should we talk about in this session? And if the client gives you a negative answer, again, invite into the first floor and ask what instead do you want. The next room is the rich picture of the desired future. The traditional way in solution-focused brief therapy to ask about the rich picture of the desired future is the miracle question. Think of a small issue that you may have or something that you want better in your life. As you're listening to this, you might do that. I'm going to give you a little bit of time to think about a small issue that might be better. And as I'm asking the questions, you might think along with me. Suppose after this call, you do whatever you're going to do today, and some time later you get tired. You do the things that you do to finish the day, and you prepare, and then you go to bed. And you fall fast asleep. And while you're sleeping, a miracle happens. And the miracle is that all the issues that we've been talking about are resolved just like that. But since you're sleeping, you cannot know that the miracle has happened. What will be the first tiny thing tomorrow morning that will alert you? Wow, there must have been a miracle. What might you begin to do when you discover that there must have been a miracle? Who else might notice that there has been a miracle for you? And what will they be noticing about you? How will they respond to your miracle? How will you respond to their response? And so on and so on and so on. So we get a really rich description of this desired future. Once you have a rich description of the desired future, you start looking for instances of this de desired future already happening. On a scale of 1 to 10, where 10 is the morning after the miracle and 1 is the complete opposite, where are you now? What tells you that you're already as an, at, an, at this number? What else? So we're really looking at all the things that are already going well. And again, in a very detailed description. Moving into the gift shop, we're asking, how will you know that you've moved up one step on the scale? And again, we're going for observable behavior. Remember, solution focus is about interactions. It's not so much about what's inside a person. It's more about what is happening between people. Mark Mercurgo, one of our solution focused um, theoreticians and one of the people who have taken solution focus into the organizational world always says it's what's between the noses and not necessarily what is between the ears. So again, we're asking for the responses, for what it will be like. In a way, in solution focused coaching, we're asking people to tell stories in ways that make us stronger, to borrow the book title of Barbara Wingard, who is a narrative therapist. So the client comes and they have an issue, a problem, something that they would like to solve. And they come with what they fear, what they don't want. And they are telling you a story about how this is terrible, what they don't want, and they're giving you details of the problem. And they've also usually constructed a logical conclusion around all the reasons and stories why this is logical that this horrible thing that they don't want is going to happen. And they've constructed that story in great, great detail. 
The task of the solution-focused coach is to tap on their shoulders and say, okay, so what do you want instead of what you fear? And you will start by having a small description of this is what I want instead. And the goal now is to make the alternative story as rich and thick as the story of the fear and the reasons for why it's not going to work. So what do they want instead? And what are the stories that tell them that they can get that? Solution focused is not about toxic positivity, about telling people they can reach everything they want. That's just not true. I mean, there is no way, for instance, I'm going to become an astronaut in my life. And it wouldn't really be useful for me to aim at that. But what do I want instead? What do I really want? I want adventure, maybe, if I wanted to be an astronaut. Okay, so what is what are the stories that tell me that I can go on adventures, even in these difficult times? Who knows that I'm an adventurous person? What do they know about me? Who would be the least surprised if I did something adventurous in my life? What do they know about me? So really making this story of what people want instead as rich in details as the story about what they fear. And getting rich, rich, rich details. What are you going to notice? That's what's going to give you the details about that tells them, okay, I can get there. And then we design small little experiments toward what people want instead. And we do all of this in partnership with our clients. This is a little graph I explain, I, I use to explain how you, or where are some of the instances where you can partner with your client. You can partner with your client right at the beginning of the session. How would you like to start the, the session? Once you've discussed what the client wants, what's important to the client, you can partner again and, and ask, have we explored what you want enough so that we can start coming to an agreement? Then we focus the discussion again to summarize, okay, this is what I would like out of this coaching session. We can partner again about how we would, how the coaching client now wants to go on. Then we expand the conversation with coaching magic, powerful questions, miracle questions, whatever the client is interested in exploring. And once we've explored enough, we can partner again and ask what has emerged from this session. When we start summarizing what's emerged, we are narrowing the conversation again. We are going into a focus. So how are you going to, we could ask, how are you going to take this forward? What, some, what thinking, insights, actions, perception, what, what are you taking forward? What are you going to experiment with? What are you going to do? What could be small steps? How are you going to notice that you're making progress? And in the end, you can partner again and ask the client, are you now okay to close? So here are all the things that you never asked about solution-focused coaching, but I somehow shared with you anyway. If you have more questions or want to try out, come to our free coaching meetup and exchanges at solutionsacademy.com slash registration. We run weekly or bi-weekly free sessions, one hour. Um, welcome, do come. It'll be nice to meet you. Thank you very much and hope to see you.